The purpose of these lessons is to show you the logic behind the most basic Chinese characters, beginning with the simplest pictograms and later combining these elements to create more complex characters. If you haven't watched lesson 1, I would recommend that you do so. Keep in mind that these are not conversation lessons. I am merely arranging Chinese characters into groups with a common component so that they are easier to memorize in case you are attempting to learn this language. And, by knowing the origin of a character, it's often very helpful in understanding its various connotations today. Today's lesson is related to the ground, land, or soil. Look at the photograph of a dried up lake bed. The pictogram for ground or land was originally a triangular clump of dry dirt on the ground. Later, this triangle was simplified to the two crossed lines that appear in the character today. This character is pronounced third tone. Tu, tu. In lesson seven, we learn that the planet Jupiter is called Mu Xing in Chinese. Now we can learn the name of the second largest planet in our solar system, Saturn. Tu Xing, Tu Xing. In lesson eight, we learn that Ben Sheng referred to the province we are in at the time. And Ben Sheng Ren is a native of this province. Likewise, Ben Tu, Ben Tu describes one's native land, its language, culture, and customs. The expression Chu Tu is used to talk about archaeological finds that have been unearthed or are being excavated. Chu Tu, literally, coming out from the earth. In lesson four, we learn the pictogram of a sprouting plant, Cai. Combining Cai with Tu creates an ideogram meaning sprouting right at this spot, existing right here and now. This character is pronounced fourth tone, Cai, Cai with cai phonetic, and is the most common preposition for in, at, or on. Extended meanings include here, there, and an extremely important usage to express present action. For example, ren zai kan shu, ren zai kan shu, someone is reading. As you can see, Zhen is also used indefinitely to mean someone or somebody. But most useful is the English ING progressive tenses. Zai tells us the action is at that moment, past, present, or future, as the case may be. The next sentence is Ren yi zhi bu zai. Ren yi zhi bu zai. Meaning that whenever I call, on the phone or in person, no one answers. They're never home, in the office, or wherever I'm calling. As I haven't introduced any pronouns or names yet, I can only use Fu Ren to ask this next question, most often heard on the telephone. Fu Ren zai bu zai. Is Madam at home? Literally, Madam, there, not there? Obviously, Cai doubles as both phonetic and semantic elements in this compound, using a plant emerging from the soil before our eyes to emphasize physical existence. It's interesting to note that the three English words physical, is, and be all derive from an Indo-European root meaning to grow. Chinese also uses a growing plant to express physical existence. Human languages may appear different, but the underlying concepts remain the same. Our next character is an ideogram composed of a hand planting trees on a mound of earth.
pronounced first tone. Feng, feng. It may seem that the pictogram for ground or land has been doubled, but actually the top part was originally a tree, which later morphed into a much simpler form resembling land. This became the phonetic element, pronounced feng, which is also a character in its own right, signifying a growing, flourishing plant. Together, all these elements describe the planting of trees on high mounds of earth to establish a border or boundary between territories. From this derives the modern meanings of to enclose, seal, or block off an area such as a condemned building, a city during a pandemic, or even a store holding a sale for select customers only, or when the shop is going out of business soon. Feng might also be a simple seal on a water or gas meter to prevent tampering. During feudal times, the king would often confer titles upon nobles and grant them territories in return for service. Conferring titles and apportioning land are two additional senses of feng because it follows that the noble would need to establish borders around his territory to protect it from any invaders. The fourth character in today's lesson appears to be two people sitting on the ground, with the meaning of to sit or to ride in a car, on a bus, train or airplane. It's pronounced fourth tone, zuo, zuo. One dictionary, the Hanzi Yuan Liu Zidian, which I listed in lesson one, gives a more elaborate interpretation of the character. After all, why are there two people sitting and not just one? And why are they sitting face to face? The original idea may have been two people sitting before the idol of a local deity, represented by Tu, and debating right and wrong. That may explain why zuo, as a rare legal term, can mean to plead a case before the court, with extended meanings of cause, crime, and incur punishment. Notice that the bench in English also refers collectively to judges sitting at court. Zuo, as a legal term, is therefore not too much of a stretch. An example of the ordinary meaning of zuo would be the action to sit down, zuo xia, zuo xia, used as a command, not a polite request. In relation to the idea of debating right and wrong before a deity, I have seen on television soap operas situations where a traditional Chinese family will force a child to swear before the family altar when that child is suspected of lying. On the altar will invariably be a statue of a god or a goddess, plus the tablet recording the family's ancestors. Presumably, the child would not dare infuriate the gods and ancestors by uttering a falsehood. Reminds me of the American tradition of placing one's right hand on a Bible when swearing an oath, as if that would prevent a person lying. The fifth and last character in today's lesson contains the character for East, Dong, that we learned in Lesson 9. As we said, Dong is a bamboo basket filled with goods and tied at both ends. So now we have a person standing upright on the ground carrying this heavy basket on his back.
This is a split sound character, pronounced fourth tone, chong, chong, or second tone, chong, chong. Fourth tone, zhong, means heavy, weighty, serious or important. For example, yu da yu zhong, to describe something both large and heavy. Let's say a refrigerator or a bed. Another example would be liang ban shu bu zhong, to say two books aren't heavy. I'm sure I can manage to carry them. As in English, something Having weight implies importance, something weighty or serious. The expression kan zhong illustrates this, meaning to regard something as important, to value it. If we turn the characters kan zhong around, the pronunciation changes to the second one, becoming chong kan. Second tone chong, chong clarifies why our load is so heavy, and it means to pile one upon another, to repeat, duplicate, be numerous. So, chong kan means to look at or watch again, or possibly to reread something. As I've mentioned before, Chinese has no grammatical suffixes, so word order naturally becomes extremely important. A further example is chong chong, meaning layer upon layer, full of something, and often refers to endless difficulties. We have seen this reduplication several times before with nouns in ren ren, tian tian, shi shi, ri ri, with adjectives in jiu jiu, zu zu, zhi zhi, chong chong, and with verbs in kan kan, sheng sheng, and zuo zuo. With verbs, but not nouns or adjectives, the number one e can be interjected. For example, kan yi kan, sheng yi sheng, and zuo yi zuo. Here is our color chart with today's six characters and their correct stroke order. Tu, zai. Bong. Chong. Chong. And Zuo. The following chart shows how these characters would appear in printed form. To fix the characters in your memory, copy them onto colored sheets of paper as suggested in previous videos. Blue, green, pink, yellow, and white. Underline any homonyms and circle those characters with more than one pronunciation. So, what have we learned in today's lesson? 1. The pictogram for ground, soil, or land, tu, was a dry clump of dirt from a dried up riverbed. 2. The planet Saturn is called tu xing in Chinese. 3. Ben tu, this very earth, is a description of one's native land, language, and culture. 4. Chu Tu refers to an archaeological find that has been excavated, literally coming out from the earth. 
5. Combining the sprouting plant Cai with Tu gives us the character Cai, indicating in, at, or on. If used with a verb, it approximates the English use of present action with ing. 6. The character Feng means to plant trees to create a boundary, with the more modern usage of sealing, enclosing, or blocking off an area or a building. During feudal times, the king conferred titles and handed out parcels of land to his nobles, which naturally required the nobles to set up and protect their borders. This is also covered by the meaning of feng. 7. Two people sitting on the ground is the character for zuo, used most commonly to refer to sitting or taking a ride in a car, bus, train, or plane. Zuo xiang is used as a command, not as a polite request. The composition of the character zuo lends itself to some legal usages, too. 8. The bamboo basket for east enters into the composition of the split sound character chong and chong, meaning heavy, important, or repeat, one following right after the other. 9. Kan chong means to put great store by something, to value it, but when the characters are turned around, chong kan means to reread or have another look at something. Due to the hundreds of word endings in a language such as Latin, word order in a sentence is largely unrestricted, whereas in Chinese, word order determines everything. 10. Reduplicated nouns increase the number or amount. Repeated adjectives increase the degree. Doubled verbs, on the other hand, soften the effect of the verb. The number one, e, can be put between verbs with the same meaning. Now you will find a short quiz on double, triple character, and longer expressions. Answer using the characters learned so far. Thank you for watching and listening.